Grayscale CEO Michael Sonnenschein has called on regulators to greenlight options for spot Bitcoin ETFs. In a statement on February 5th, Sonnenschein highlighted the benefits of the exchange-traded options for investors, emphasizing its role in price discovery and the potential to help investors manage market conditions more effectively or archive specific outcomes like generating income. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and let's start. We are starting here with Spot ETF narrative sees that Bitcoin volatility index is now at a two months low, but we know what this means, big move loading one way or the other. Also, those of us who are into Bitcoin are just built differently, I guess. And looking at all those days, the price that we have right now is 42,900 was every single month starting February 21st. First, uh, I mean, not every single month, but a lot of months starting February 21st. And uh, here we could see the February 21st, May 21st, August 21st, September 21st, December 21st. In the 2022, those were January 22, uh, January 22nd, February 22nd, March 22nd, April 22nd. And also in 2023, it was only one year when we had a price of almost 33,000, which is December 23rd. And on February 24th this uh, year, this is the point where we are in. Next up, my timeline is getting increasingly impatient and bearish while Bitcoin looks like this. Holding all key levels, new keys are a matter of time. I cannot repeat this enough. Hold tight and be patient. If Bitcoin goes above 44,000, over $5.1 billion in shorts will be liquidated. Just imagine that. Just above a little bit, 44,000, which not far away, just 2,000 plus, and all the $5 billion in shorts will be liquidated in, a, in, in an instance. All I'm saying, this looks like actually it is going to play out well on this chart, then it's going to go down after this price position. Next up, something really inspired happen, inspiring happened today. Something really inspiring happened today. A Bitcoiner traveled to Jefferson City to listen into the support, uh, the testimony that was delivered for the Bitcoin hearing at the Missouri State Capitol. I didn't ask him to be there, he just showed up, quietly sat, listened, and privately voiced his support once the hearing was completed. You might not think it, but it's like uh, like a little surprises of support like this that uh, light me up and give me the courage to continue pushing for a Bitcoin. Uh, the Bitcoiner took time out of his day to come down to the capital just to be there and show support. He didn't get speaking time, he didn't get camera time, he didn't ask for either. That type of support from the Bitcoin community really motivates me to keep fighting to advance our cause. Thank you to my new Bitcoin friend, your act of support meant a lot to me. Next up, Michael Saylor now owns 0.9% of the total Bitcoin supply. Considering the fact that 6 million are most likely lost forever, he actually owns 1.26% of total supply right there. And that's really massive and really great, I would say. So, next up, MicroStrategy holds almost 1% of all the Bitcoins that will ever exist, one of the biggest Bitcoin whales. As we could see, the growth in Bitcoin holdings, MicroStrategy has acquired additional Bitcoin in every quarter since quarter 3 2020. As in quarter 4 2023, 30.5 thousand Bitcoins uh, purchased for 1.2 billion using proceeds uh, from capital market activities, um, 350 Bitcoin purchased for $13.4 million using access. Uh, excess cash. In quarter 1, 2024, uh, 850 Bitcoins purchased for $37.2 million using excess cash micro. 190,000 Bitcoins held on the balance sheet acquired uh, for a total cost of $6 billion or $31,000 per Bitcoin at average. And starting from quarter 3 to uh, 2020, uh, the holdings were at 38,000 and then we could see that right now it's 190,000. So just in four, I would say even in three years acquired, uh, even like 2.5 years, they acquired uh, most of their Bitcoin, which is around 160,000 Bitcoins in one point, uh, in 2.5 years. And it's not far along. I, I, I bet that most of y'all, like maybe 
70% were at that moment right there and haven't purchased a single Bitcoin. And next we go with Bitcoin news as BlackRock holds $3.3 billion worth of Bitcoin already and they continue on buying more and more and accumulating. That means that the price is for sure going to rise because they need to take profits out of it somehow and they are going to continue on purchasing more and more while you are basically going to still think that it's not going to go up. A really big move for Bitcoin is brewing, uh, in my own opinion. The BBWP indicator has only given a signal four times in the last eight years. Each time there was a strong market movement shortly afterwards. About 21 EMA line it went upwards, below the 21 EMA line it went down, send it, and it's going to go up. Also, Grayscale CEO calls for regulatory approval on spot Bitcoin ETF options. As Grayscale CEO Michael Sonnenschein has called on regulators to greenlight options for spot Bitcoin ETFs. In a statement on February 5th, Sonnenschein highlighted the benefits of exchange traded options for investors, emphasizing its role in price discovery and the potential to help investors manage market conditions more effectively or achieve specific outcomes like generating an income. As we look ahead, I think it's never been more important for the crypto and ETF communities alike to advocate for the development of the robust listed options market for spot Bitcoin ETFs, although the GDBC has been in the public market since 2015 and it was never accompanied by listed. Exchange traded options are standardized contracts, uh, contracts allowing the buying or selling a financial asset at a predominant uh, pre the predeterminated price within a specific time frame. These options offer flexibility, enabling traders to speculate on or hatch against the future price movements of stocks, bonds, or the overall market without the obligation to buy or sell the underlying asset. Such options are regulated by the US authorities, including the Commodity Futures Trading Commission and the Securities and Exchange Commission with an options clearing corporations, providing guarantees for transactions. Sun and China referred to the SEC approval of the first Bitcoin Futures ETF in October 2021 which saw a listed options for the ETF trading the next day, benefiting from automatic effectiveness based on existing rules, as however he pointed out that the commodity-based ETF like spot Bitcoin ETFs do not enjoy the streamlined process and instead face a more extended review period, similar to the 19B4 process applicable to the ETFs themselves. The Grayscale CEO argued for a parity between the similar products, noting recent filings by the New York Stock Exchanges and other exchanges to amend and the listing standards, which would include listed options for commodity-based ETFs and he stressed that such amendments would also cover spot Bitcoin ETFs aiming for equitable treatment across the financial products. So the SEC reviews applications for listed options on spot Bitcoin ETFs with comments open for BlackRock's proposed options with a CBO E. As Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balchunas indicated that a SEC decision could come as soon as February 15th or could be extended to September 2024. And ASEC has already acknowledged the 19B force requesting the ability to trade options on spot Bitcoin ETFs as this faster than the SEC typically moves options could be approved uh, before end of February and if the SEC wants to move fast, we are going to get it. Sonny Chine's advocacy for fair treatment of the crypto asset class and spot Bitcoin ETFs reflects a broader push for regulatory clarity and equal opportunity in the financial markets. Grayscale GBDC ETF which transitions from an existing fund held $20.5 billion in assets under the management as of February 2nd, marking it as the largest pot Bitcoin ETF at the time despite experiencing significant outflows. That's all the information we have on today's video, so don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next one, and peace.